pain. Pain is the great equalizer, the secret to life. From the time I was a boy, I learned to always inflict pain faster than my opponent, to never let pain guide my decisions, and always harness the pain for my own strength. The great quake brought misery and death to a callous number of people, but it made me a god, ruler of my domain, the greatest bounty hunter to ever live. No one, no one dares run from T.J. Swenson, except one. They call her the Lone Survivor, the savior of the refugees, but she is my greatest bounty ever. This is Life on the Changing Earth. Erica, are you okay? Erica? What? I was asking about the Capitol building and you just zoned out. Are you okay? Oh yeah. What did you want to know about it? Is it true what they say? Does it look like a giant snow globe? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> what are you two doing? Mrs. Jane has cookies she made on her bus. Can we get one? I don't see a problem with that. You better bring us back one. You know, Erica, you can talk to me about what happened. It might help. I'm fine, buddy. You're not. You have this far off stare. You're somewhere else. It was a long road. I can't begin to understand, but I'll try. We still got a long way to go. We'll do it together this time. Sounds good to me. Brace yourselves! The buses! Everybody, hold tight. good? I'm okay. How about you, Mom? <sighs> it's over. Be on the ready for aftershocks. The quakes are starting again. It's too soon. We still have too far to go. It'll be okay, Erica. Go check on Vince. I'll check on the kids. I'll go with you. The boys are headed to Jane's bus. Walker, Pontsford, let's get the rods out and get these buses stabilized. Yes, sir. Uh She survived again? I'm tired of this game, Mr. Lee. No one can take her as long as Ben is by her side. There has to be a way, TJ. You've been hunting her for years. Last I heard, she was in a massive caravan headed across Nevada. But there have been quakes that way. Big ones. I think we should be on the ready. I've dreamed many nights of how I would take that girl, Mr. Lee. But Bennett is a masterful opponent. We've got everything under control without her. With the nuclear disaster in Illinois, our services supplying refugees for the cleanup effort are needed more than ever. Yet still, the resistance grows. With the quakes returning, they won't last long. The mercenary leader is a buffoon. Do you know where she's going? Remember Cassidy Baker? Yeah, the Western militia leader. Last we saw her, she was leaving those homesteads. Judging by Vince and Erica's patterns, I wouldn't be surprised if they were headed there. You should give Edna out there some serious thoughts, TJ. This would ensure your spot with the Supreme General. I already have that spot, Mr. Lee, and like I said, I'm tired of the game. Anyway, I have to get back to my sweet Dolores. We have more to discuss. You made the choice, son. But sometimes it's about perseverance. I'll keep that in mind. Good night, sir.
It'll be ready in a minute. Good. How are we, my sweet Dolores? Fine, TJ. Come here. Yes, sir. Get on your knees. Jenny, bring me... Excellent job, Jenny. Thanks. Tell me again how Erica found your medical facility. She met a man. His name was Clint. He knew about my facility. My men tracked her to Oakhurst, and then Erica disappeared. How did they end up so far north? I don't know, but I know there were tunnels all over the state from the refugees. It was the only way to avoid the thermal trackers. Bennett's team had devices to mask their thermal signatures. Tell me about that. I don't know about that. I only saw Erica for a few hours. We didn't have time to talk. Her boy was dying? Yes, from the tracker in him. How'd your doctor know how to remove it? He had been studying them for a while. The refugees always died when he tried to remove it. Why was Daniel different? Guess it was radiation exposure. So you get them all cleaned up and feed them, and then what happens? General McClintock's son saw them. So I sent them north in my tunnel system. You didn't know Virgis was trying to find her to take her back to the northern region? No. You already told me you were very friendly with Virgis. Why didn't he tell you? He's a private man. <laughs> or you're lying. I did tell Virgis, but not until he told me about Monroe. What did he tell you? Do you want Sheila to ask? I've watched Virgis arrest his best friend. I thought Monroe died fighting for his freedom in Vegas. He didn't? No. Virgis got him to Freetown in Montana. He changed his name, and his wife bore him a son. Interesting. They left. I didn't see them until they returned to train for the battle. TJ, you home? I'm finishing my dinner. I got the bike done. You remember Dolores, the healer? I sure do. Dolores, this is Chuck Laudner. Yes, sir. We're going to help him during the day to keep his women healthy. You shower before you come here. Yes, sir. Come on, enough business. Come check out the bike. Come in. Ben, how the hell are you? Good, sir. We received all the munitions from Reno. Well done, Gunny. Any word on Vegas? Johnny reported in. Henderson destroyed the city, but the Moors and Bennett all survived. We were able to retrieve the militia soldiers. The caravans are en route. Excellent. Let's toast to that. I could definitely go for a drink after that trip. Have a seat. What's it looking like out there? Not good. The quakes are getting more intense and the water is starting to move. Brad doesn't think there will be another tsunami like after the Great Quake. Isn't it all speculation at this point, sir? Who could have predicted this? He did. What's next on the agenda? You'll get a full briefing tomorrow, but we need to focus on the people who can't move fast enough on their own accord. I'm not sure how long the roads will hold, sir. Then we'll go off-road, but we're saving as many as possible. I'll do my best, sir. Let them choose whether they want to go south to Texas or help us take back the north. Hey there, baby face. Cassidy, how nice to see you back in town. Come in, this is... Gunnery Sergeant Ben Nickleton. How's the world been treating you, Ben? Not too bad, Miss Cassidy. <laughs> of course you know each other. You're the one who hasn't been here, baby face. Not us. Sounds like you have some things to get straight, ma'am. I'm heading off to bed. Good night, sir. Good night, Gunny. You started without me? How did it go? We've got a nest of black shirts, smack in the middle of Amarillo. Their forces are strong and trained virtuous. We're getting ready for the Denver battle, moving all these people. We don't have time to move enough forces that way right now. My thoughts exactly, but we need to warn people what they are up against if they choose to go to Texas. They have access to port travel as well as the Southern Pass. We'll have to focus on it after Denver. I'll talk to Merkley. 
How long are you here? A few days at least. In that case, you better kiss me again before you get called away. <laughs> Say no more, baby face. We're living quick in this world, gonna get it right now. We only need the two of us together. We only need the two of us together. Cause we got love Cause we got love Erica, there you are. Is everything okay? Is Vince alright? Everything is fine, but I have ten more buses to attend to. Can you watch over this one for a while? You got it, Doc. Is everyone all right? I'm sure there have been a few casualties, but at least we aren't around any buildings. Isn't that the truth? How are you feeling, mister? Like I've been hit by a truck. You look like you've been hit by a truck. And your tooth. Oh yeah, that frickin' jerk. When did the captain manage that one? Right at the start. He even pointed to his tooth afterward and winked at me. <laughs> Don't worry too much about it. That's kind of cute. Yeah, I bet. I'm impressed. I thought more stuff would fall. These medical buses are well built. I'm impressed by how many bunks they can pack in here with all these supplies. Maybe I should make sure the rods are out. The bus isn't going to go very far inside. Hey, Dex, I was just coming to do that. I got you, Mom. Did Grandma find Daniel? Yeah, starts with him now. We need to move faster. People are catching up to us, saying the water is coming. Another tsunami? I don't know, but it's coming. Where's Bennett? I don't know. Do I look like I have a built-in Bennett detector? Why don't you go find him? I told Earl I would stay here. Earl, you're back quick. Get ready to go. Hey everyone, this is Phil Rabley from the Matter Facts Podcast, voicing the role of Cole Verges. If prepping guns and politics sounds like your cup of tea, come check out the Matter Facts Podcast every Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify with my co-host, Andrew Bobo. Surgeon. I'll be right back. This better be important, Trent. It's New Dove, Cole. The quake split the entire city in half. They're talking about tens of thousands of casualties and need immediate evacuation. Sir, Merkley wants you in his office now. Hold on a second, Stevens. Hall, get us ready to roll. Come on, we're leaving. Are you serious? New Dove was split in half. What? They need evac. I have to talk to Merkley. I'll make sure my teams are ready to move out. You want to see me, sir? Have you been briefed? Regarding New Dove, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. I want half our teams headed that way, but keep the other crews on the move. Take them down to the skeleton crews, but keep them moving. Yes, sir. Permission to speak freely, sir? Granted. I am honored to serve under you and grateful for the care you are putting into rescuing civilians. Thank you, Cole. I believe we've seen enough death. 
Sir, McClintock's son, First Sergeant Bennett, and the Moors are out on the edge of the disaster because they were trying to get our men out of Vegas before the attack. I'm fully aware. Can we send a helicopter to retrieve them and ensure they return here before the water does? I'll send one. There's a large group of essentials out there, sir. Three choppers could collect them all. No, that's too much fuel. I can send one. Thank you, sir. Stevens, radio to Bennett. Let him know a helicopter is coming to get him, Johnny, and the Moore family. Yes, sir. Are we ready to roll? The trucks are ready to go. Medical supplies are stocked, and the fuel's been topped off. Very good. Let's move. Get Vince ready to move. What? Why? Bennett has a helicopter ready for us. The kids and your mom are coming with us. What about Greg and Penny? I worked too hard to find them. I'm not leaving them again. There's only room for us. Bennett wants you out of here. We can send a chopper back for them. I'll go check on Vince. You go get the kids and your mom rounded up and meet me inside. Are we gonna leave, Mom? Get Star and Daniel. What am I supposed to tell Greg and Penny? Tell them the truth. The chopper's coming back for them. Bennett's got orders to fly us out of here. All of us? The chopper is coming back for you guys. <laughs> hey, Greg. I love you. We'll meet again. I love you too, kid. I guess I'm just sick of saying goodbye. It's coming back. Daniel! Daniel! Days like these last... Stop! You're gonna make me drop this stuff! Daniel! What's up, Dex? We have to go, Daniel. Bennett is flying us out of here. What about Carmen? The chopper is coming back for him, Danny. We just got back together. And we'll see each other again soon. I guess so. Let me say goodbye. It all starts There you are! Are you sure we're doing the right thing? No, but I don't see we have much option right now. It's not for me to Feel good. Who's the one that makes you feel all right? Who's the one they call Dr. Feel Good? Mr. Lee? What are you doing? Uh, nothing. Were you dancing, sir? Are you hanging a hummingbird feeder on the window? Is it your business to know what I'm doing? No, sir. What the hell are you doing, anyway? Chuck wanted me to see if you wanted a woman tonight when I was done training. Well, I'm done training. I'm fine. Go do whatever it was you were doing. Yes, sir. I wouldn't go in there. Let's eat peace the belt now. He's having his happy time. 
What's that about? Nate! What's Mr. Leo fired up about? He's been spending a lot of time with Susan. That explains the hummingbird feeder. The what? How do you know where Susan's been spending her time? Well, I was over visiting with Marg. With Margaret? Yes, sir. My baby girl's so sweet, sir. You make sure they're all well taken care of. I will, sir. What the hell are you all doing outside my office having a powwow? Nate, get back to class. Yes, sir, Mr. Lee. Sir, get your ass inside. Yes, sir. TJ, figure it out. Yes, sir. So many days is yet to come. So many times has come to pass. Too many moments put aside. Getting out alive, getting out alive. Hi, DJ. Where's Susan? In her office. Hi, TJ. What brings you by? I want you to schedule an extra shipment of oil from Texas. We're moving soldiers to Rutherford's compound this month, and I don't want to run low. Yes, TJ. We can trade canned foods for it. They'll be happy about that. What? Doesn't Yuri usually take care of those requests? I beat him to it. How is Margaret doing? She's doing great. I think she was meant to be a thinker, not a fighter. She was one hell of a fighter. So was I. <laughs> True. What did you do to Mr. Lee? What are you talking about, TJ? He was dancing and hanging a hummingbird feeder. The man doesn't dance. Maybe you've just never seen him dance before. And what if he wants to watch birds? What's the problem with that? Watch yourself, woman. You think I'm a hard man? He could be as cold as ice. TJ, are you concerned about me? Just do your job and watch yourself. Yes, TJ. Come to my house to eat tonight. I need to talk to you. Yes, TJ. This is the scoop, Erica. You are part of the Merc forces. You're going undercover. The homesteaders that live here have been on their own since the quake. They support the mercenary and the militia efforts and cover up the base. They didn't want government assistance and they never received it. The homesteaders like having the protection of the Merc forces, but they do not want to draw attention to themselves. You'll need to play the role if you're going to mingle here. I have to pretend to be someone else? The feds are hunting you, Shortstack. How long do you want to live? 
Really? You're all giddy about this? A new nickname, even? Whose command are we under? <laughs> Mine, of course. Where's Lieutenant Colonel Burgess? He's helping get people out of New Dove. Speaking of... What about Greg and Penny? I'm taking care of that when we're done here. Your name, Miss Erica Moore, is Karen Case. Karen Case? That's the best you could come up with? Don't forget, your name is known, but if you keep your hat on and your head down, hopefully your face won't be. It's still a risk, so don't do anything stupid. Who, me? Do something stupid? Come on, First Sergeant, you know me better than that. Erica. What about us? You better not do anything stupid either. No, sir. What are our names? You're Justin. Vince is Eddie. Star is Jenny. And Daniel is Danny. How come I don't get a fake name? Because that will be easier to remember. Just in case. Real cute, sir. <laughs> what? I used to have a friend with that name. Now, Johnny, you know the down low rules. Go with Jonathan or Corporal Johnson. Yes, sir. Kay and Earl, you should use the alias last name. Everyone else will be okay. Now head over to the gate. They have the tents ready for your family. Yes, sir. Don't give me that crappy salute, Cupcake. Yeah, wonder if days like these last one another reminds me of the Vegas camp in the early days. Minus the green, of course. On the road again, Grandma. At least I'm with my family. But I am not looking forward to living in a tent again. You can say that again. There are so many people. Where will they all go? They're part of the resistance now. If they want to be. Face it, Dad. The feds will have to eliminate them. It's the only way to maintain order now. Assumptions can be dangerous, Vince. Oh, I mean, Eddie. Do you think they would ever be accepted again? Can't we just wait and see what happens? There will be many more people in a few days, and we need to be ready to help. How did you like the helicopter ride, Megan? Never thought I would be in one. Did you guys see that huge crack, my new dove? That was wild! I knew I'd find you here eventually. Kyle! I was so worried about you and Cassidy. After the bombing in Albuquerque, I wasn't sure if you made it. We did. I heard that y'all took Vegas, but they bombed it heavily. Word was that the lone survivor survived again, though. Is Cassidy here? No, she's going out on a scouting mission for a couple of weeks. I would like to introduce my family. You know Vince and Dexter, or Eddie and Justin, as they're known here. Oh, and I'm Karen. Anyway, this is my mom, Nancy, my daughter, Star, or Jenny, here. My youngest son, Daniel, or Danny. My in-laws, Earl and Kay, and their adopted daughter, Megan. That guy over there is Jonathan Johnson. Nice to meet you all. I'm Kyle Bravowski. I met Karen and Eddie in Dallas and became their driver, I guess. Do you guys need help getting checked in? I guess so. I'm Earl Keith. I know who you are. Well, actually, I know who they are. And if you're with them, I know where you need to go. Well then... I guess all you need to know is we're with them. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to be rude. I'm just really busy and have orders to check them in. No offense taken. Do what you gotta do. Staff Sergeant Case? Staff Sergeant Karen Case? Oh, me? I'm a Staff Sergeant? That's what your uniform says. Come on, I'll show your family to their tents. Lead on. Here they are. Two tents? Yes, just two. It's all we could spare. How do you want to split it up? Nancy and Johnny can stay with us. Then it's five in each tent. That's fine with me. Johnny and I can be roommates. I'd love to share my abode with a cougar like yourself. Let's just get settled in and grab some chow. Yeah, the wonder.
Hello, this is L. Douglas Hogan, voice of T.J. Swinson. You can follow me at Amazon or go to Facebook.com slash Honor Your Oath. I look forward to seeing you there. Hi. Hi. T.J. told me to come for dinner. Come on in. Margaret Parker. Hi, TJ. How do you like your new position? I like it. Susan has me keeping inventory for our canned food. It's fun to learn all the math to keep it all straight. Sit down. Thank you, TJ. What would you like to drink, ma'am? <laughs> Jenny, this is Margaret. Don't call her ma'am. Yes, TJ. I'll have a glass of water. Water? I had Jenny make lemonade for you. Really? I love a glass. You can have some as well, Jenny. Thank you, TJ. Bring your plate here and eat with us. Oh, okay. I have a problem, Margaret. How can I help you? I don't know what to do with your father. Jasper? That man is nothing to me. <laughs> Should I kill him? I can't trust him working with my refugees. That would be too kind, TJ. Whip him until he's a cripple, then take him out to the middle of the Badlands and leave him for dead. <laughs> now there's an idea I didn't think of. But he was probably... That man was never my father. I miss my father. Jenny, you don't stick your nose in business that doesn't concern you. Yes, TJ. Since you're so full of ideas tonight, Margaret, I have another problem for you to solve. Okay. Jenny's lonely and needs a friend. <laughs> That's an easy problem to solve. I want you to take her to the marketplace so she can start doing the shopping. You'll stay with her. And do not take her to the pit. Yes, DJ? Come by and take her tomorrow. Have Wayne, Ricky, and James guard you. They're not even black shirts, TJ. They're capable and loyal. And so are you. How does that sound, Jenny? I like that very much. Good. Then it's settled. Mm. I'm headed to Yuri's. You can help with the dishes, Margaret. I will. Good night, TJ. Every time I'm feeling down, you can make it go away. Your light is shining bright on me. Got no reason to be afraid. You're glowing in the dark. You're glowing in the dark. Glowing in the dark. I feel it in my heart. You're glowing in the dark, glowing in the dark, yeah, you're glowing. Canned meat and green beans? Soft, yet palatable. At least the fresh greens give it a bright note. More quakes? Meh, I barely notice them anymore. I'm going to volunteer at the little school they have going. The woman running it looked very overwhelmed. You know where I'll be. Never a shortage of work for doctors. Always too many patients. Never enough supplies. Well, at least dinner's not rat. Jeez, what's her problem? She's just concerned about Greg and Penny. Plus, I don't think she's hip about living someone else's life. I'm with her on that one. You okay, baby? Yeah, I just need a break from the negative energy. Hey, Karen, I'll catch up with you later. See you later. Your dad is just so... Ugh. Guys ready? It's gonna be an early morning. Yep. You're dragging your feet, Mom. 
Yeah. It's beautiful here. It is. It reminds me of that river we used to go to when I was little, before the quake. You remember that? Sort of. We used to pick ferns. Like that, didn't we? Yeah. Fiddlehead ferns. I used to bread them and fry them. What's going on? I don't know. Come on. You will have to decrease the number of carbs in their diets and increase the protein. It's too expensive, and they need their energy. Need to be healthy, or they are useless. You'll end up with a whole mess of sick women, like you have in your sick houses. They need to do their jobs and keep their mouths shut. They need protein and vegetables. It's a miracle you've kept them in the condition that they are eating potatoes and wheat slaw. I roll the stock over often. Then, you have a bunch of pissed off women and aren't doing the job they could be. DJ, my brother. What brings you by? Is she giving you problems, Chuck? I sent her by to help out, not pitch a fit. It's okay, TJ. She's not wrong. You make sure you stay in your place. Yes, TJ. TJ, this salve she can make? The stuff works like magic. Heals those whip wounds in half the time. Make sure she gets help when you're done with her. I will. What do you want, anyways? I want you to take Jasper out to Tran. What? Have Tran whip him almost to death and leave him in the middle of the Badlands. There's something you've never done before. Margaret's suggestion. She's been doing well. If that's what she wants, then whatever. I knew there was still a soft spot in there. Keep an eye on Dolores, Chuck. She's a smart one. Don't I know it. I'll get plenty of use out of her skills. Come by my home when you're done here. Yes, TJ. You're in the right place. You got the power, don't you? You got nothing to waste. We are all safe. Ah. Put him in the brig. Don't do this, sir. Get him out of here. Was that Bennett? I think so. Kyle! What happened? I don't know, but Bennett socked General Merkley right in the face. What? Did you say that Bennett socked Merkley? Saw it with my own two eyes. Do me a favor. Sure. Can you find out where they're keeping him and let me know? You got it. Mom, what about Carmen? I don't know, buddy. You said that Bennett was going back to get him. We saw him right there. But where are Carmen, Greg, and Penny? That's what he told me, Daniel. Us, baby. That's what he told us. I never would have left them if that helicopter wasn't going back. I told Greg the helicopter was going back. Okay, guys, calm down. We don't know what happened yet. Let's wait to see how angry we need to get. What on earth do I do now? What on earth do I do now? Miss Karen. God, I hate that name. Come on in. Hi, Kyle. You want some water? Sure, thanks. How'd it go? He's being held in a series of cells in a building right by the training center. Thanks. Is Vince doing okay? He got pretty beat up in the encounter with Matthew Tweed's captain. You may have noticed the missing tooth earlier. And the bruises. It must have been crazy to go back there again. It was, dude. And then it got hammered. It was just the same old place we left behind. Anyway, I gotta see Bennett, find out what happened. I'll go with you. 
my mom. What are you guys up to? We're heading into town. We're looking for Dex. You ready, bro? I'm good to go. Daniel's going to take care of Trucker and Dad for me. Right, bud? Uh-huh. We'll walk with you. There's supposed to be a community center to hang out at. I guess they have pool tables there. And live music. You have to come with us one night, Mom. You guys scout it out for me. We're on it. And stay safe. We will, Mom. We'll keep an eye on them. Bye, Karen. Shut up, smart Alec. You certainly know your way around here. This is Cassidy's training center. The feds gave up on this place long ago, but Cassidy's father created a militia force. The federal government treated them like a mercenary force. They kept in contact for a while. Having the image of a united force in the area keeps the homesteaders safe and the law maintained in town. I've made a lot of trips up here from Texas. I had no idea. Lead on then. Erica. Erica Moore. What in the hell is going on here, ma'am? Gunny, how the heck are you? I haven't seen you since you were kicking our butts in Reno. I've been better. i just gotten into town to find out that Bennett's in a lockup. I don't know what happened, sir. I was going to find out. Don't bother. They're waiting for Lieutenant Colonel Virgis to get back into town to figure out what to do with Bennett. Bennett was supposed to head back to the camp in Nevada to get another group on the helicopter. Do you know if they did? I don't know. Like I said, I just got here myself. We were one of the first convoys, though. The water has been filling Nevada. Not fast like before. More like someone slowly filling a bathtub. Well, I'm going to give it a try anyway. I've got to know what happened to my friends and what the heck happened to Bennett. I didn't hear that. I'll have to report to my CO. We'll catch up later. Gunny, here my name is Staff Sergeant Case. You can't call me Erica. Got it. Friend of yours? He was my training officer for Vegas and an old friend of Bennett's. Come on. you like morale patches? Morale patches that are prepper related? Things like, hey, can I drink that fuel? Two is one, one is none, three is a guarantee, or been prepping since Y2K? Well, if so, go to patchofthemonth.co and subscribe for 10 bucks a month or $100 a year. Sir, we still have two teams pulling people out of the ravine. Cassidy, how many transports do we have ready to go? We've got five ready to roll now, and three more coming in. Okay, let's evacuate the community center again and do one more sweep of the town. We're going to have to move these people north quickly. They'll overwhelm the homesteads. Half the transports are going straight through. Dixon just sent us another load of fuel. Perfect. Sir, I think you're going to want to hear this. What's up? Bennett is in custody at the homesteads. What are you talking about? He's supposed to be watching Eric. Nicholson said he hit General Murphy. He did what? Gunny said there was a disagreement. Bennett wanted to return for the rest of Erica's crew from Vegas, but Murphy wouldn't put the bird back in the air. It sounds like something Erica would do, but not Bennett. <laughs> Her passion is contagious, sir. Gunny wants you to come back so you can talk to the general. Stevens and I can wrap things up here, babyface. Go see what you can do. What you need, boss? Make sure she gets out of here. We got three transports coming in now and six more in three hours. We're headed west as soon as we're done here. Perfect. That water is moving quicker now. If Erica's crew is still out there, let's make them a priority as soon as we're done here. Will do. I'll head back, get this shit straightened out, and meet you at the pass. Stevens is reliable. She can help you coordinate the transports and reroute incoming when you're done here. I'll see you then. Keep me posted. You two aren't allowed back here. What's up, Jeff? Hey, Kyle. What are you doing back here? You gotta let us see one of the prisoners. Oh, no. General Merkley is pissed. Who's the cutie? This is Staff Sergeant Case. She just got here. Yeah, that's Erica Moore. Isn't it, Kyle? Holy shit! It is! 
Yes! Don't say anything, though. She needs to talk with Bennett. I guess. For Erica Moore? Yeah, we can do that. Thanks, man. I owe you one. Yeah, you do. Kyle, can you give us a minute? Sure. Can you tell me where to start? I need someone to empty this heart. Hi, Sergeant. Erica, what are you doing here? Is Cole here yet? Cole isn't here yet. What happened, Bennett? Where's Greg and Penny? I don't know, Erica. I told you we would go back. I don't want to lose your trust again, but... What are you talking about? I went back to fly out with the helicopter, but the pilot's orders were to keep it grounded. I went to his CO, but the orders came down from Merkley himself. Cole's out of town, so I went to Merkley. Greg and Penny aren't the only ones out there. I promised Terrence I'd be back. So you went to Merkley, and he wouldn't change his mind. So you hit him? I, I, I don't know what I was thinking, Erica. You never disrespect a ranking officer, and I, I hit the man. But everyone was counting on me. I knew the orders, but I... Oh, Erica, what did I do? <laughs> you hit the acting leader of the mercenary army in the face. Guess I'm wearing off on you. Way to go, Captain Cantaloupe. Oh, you think this is real funny? I didn't ask you to clock Merkley in the kisser. Whatever. No, really, Bennett. You put the ones you love before your orders. It sounds much more like something I would do. <laughs> You're right. What are you going to do? Wait to see what Merkley has to say. What else can I do? Nothing, I guess. I'm sure Cole will be here soon. And he'll fix this. No, Erica. I'll face the consequences of my actions. I screwed up. I brought you something. A hood? Go ahead. Try it on. Now imagine a chain holding it around your neck and turn the temperature up about 100 degrees. Erica, uh, I... I didn't bring it to make you feel bad. I brought it because that's what I endured, Sergeant Bennett. I spent weeks in a box, being treated like dirt, all because I wouldn't give up on my beliefs. Honestly, I'd do it all again. So you stood up for your beliefs, and now you have to live with that decision. I lived in that thing. So suck it up, buttercup. I'm proud of you. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You are a leader of leaders. It's me that is proud of you, Erica. Now get the hell out of here before those boys get into trouble for letting you in. Just stay true. To what you believe in To what you believe in larger ain't bolder and wiser ain't bolder Just hold on to what you believe in To what you believe in There's Burgess! Oh shoot! There's no avoiding him now. Erica, what are you doing here? What do you think? It's good to see you safe. You got here quickly. It's good to see you too. You went to see him, didn't you? I did. What did he say? I don't know. The young men down there wouldn't let anyone in. Hmm. Where's Vince? At the tent sleeping. He got messed up in Vegas. I heard and prayed for him. Is he going to be okay? His smile won't be the same, but he'll be okay. And how are you? I'm just peachy, Cole. Don't play your interrogation game with me. I know what you're doing. Why did Merkley lie? Lieutenant Colonel, just the man I've been waiting for. Sir? Go meet me in my office. Yes, sir. You must be Mrs. Erica Moore. Yes, sir. We've never formally met, but I understand I have you to thank for a series of times you sent Bennett to help me and my family. Can you please come up to my office as well? 
I want to talk with you more. Yes, sir. I'll catch up with you later, Kyle. Thanks for listening to the Changing Earth audio drama. This content is copywritten in 2023 by author Sarah F. Hathaway. Special thanks to featured musician Five Times August. Find his latest hits at fivetimesaugust.com. Get to know our amazing performers and listen to the soundtrack at changingearthseries.com. Special thanks to Zap Splat, freesound.com, and freemusicarchives.com. Find all the music and sound attributes at author Sarah F. Hathaway.com backslash soundtrack. Stay tuned for more of the Changing Earth Adventure.